As a speaker, he conducts presentations to companies and professional organizations around the country on how to build competent, confident leaders capable of leading high-performing teams. You talk in Chapter 1 about leadership challenges in the business world. Tell us a little bit about that. What are some of those challenges? Yeah. Well, the I think one of the most prominent ones is how do you attract and retain top talent? That comes up everywhere I go. That's what people want me to answer. Uh, and the key there is if your organization, you know, what separates your organization from every other like organization around? Because in this free market society, competition is everywhere. Uh, and most people have the same products, the same services. They might have the same pay and benefits that, that everybody else might have. And everybody's looking at the same resource pool for people. Mm -hmm. So what is it that separates you? What is it that's going to attract people to come work for you? And ultimately that goes back to how a company manages and develops and supports their people and the development of those people. That is what uh, will really separate those. So how do you put a leader development program? How do you engage in a culture where we care about you, we want to support you, we want it to get you promoted, we want you to be successful? How do you capture that in your organization? That's another challenge. Uh, the whole leadership development world constantly comes up. I get asked all the time, you know, wherever I speak, how can I, how can I become a better leader? And it's wonderful when people ask me that because I got some answers for them. But it's disappointing in the fact that they're asking me, you know, mm -hmm. that their organization obviously is not living up to what they could do. Mm -hmm. So the whole development of leaders, at how do you train and develop the first line supervisors? Where do you go? How do you do that? What about the executive leadership team? What is it they need to know? How do you do that? How do you coach? How do you develop? What program do you put in place? So those are all sort of capture the essence of what I get asked to talk about. There's an art and a science to being an effective leader. The art is how you connect with people. You know, it's how do you touch their, what's inside their rib cage, that heart and soul and kind of get after what really genuinely motivates and inspires them to do things. That's right. Uh, and then there's a the science behind it, which is more measurable. It's how, let's have very specific goals. Let's develop strategies. Let's assess performance and see how you're doing. Uh, and it's those two combinations that you got to constantly balance because everybody needs something different. I love the, the saying, some people need a pat on the back, some high, some low. You know, it takes different techniques. It's, it's situational dependent on what a guy or gal might need to be successful. One of the, the myths about the Army, why perhaps some businesses don't want to hire me or don't want to get involved in the Army way of doing business, is because they think the Army is just is this very strict hierarchical command and control mm. type structure right. where everybody simply follows the orders of whoever outranks them. Right. I right. will tell you, uh, in times of war, when lives are on the line, when risks are high, time is of the essence, that will be the, that will be the decision. And sure. that will be the place, and that's where a disciplined force comes into play. need that, right. Absolutely. But for the vast majority of time, nothing could be further from the truth. And that's why we, we spend so much time educating and training soldiers of all ranks so that we can effectively delegate responsibility and the authority to make decisions. If we're going to be adaptable on the battlefield, and be able to evolve to changing conditions. We got to empower and, and ensure that they are capable uh, at the lowest level possible to make those sorts of decisions. Uh, I also offer speaking opportunities. Uh, and I love to get out and, and travel around the country, and I do it often, and give opportunities uh, to share in, in an hour or 90 minute keynote presentation, uh, and sometimes followed on by workshops on a particular focus on leadership development or part of my new book on Brave or an element that I am comfortable and I'm qualified to speak on, uh, I will have interviews with the organizations and find out what the biggest challenges are uh, to make sure I, I tailor the presentation to meet the needs of the organization. And upon reflection in the Army, one of the most joyful things that I experienced in my 32 years was this development of people. I had so many who helped me, and I was able to help so many others. How could I take that mm -hmm. and help a whole other world in the business world who didn't have the experience I did? I would love to be able to share the old adage, 
If I only knew then what I know now. I was so much smarter, you know, after I retired from the Army, and I just wish I had learned a lot of that sooner. How can I help that cause?